Have you ever thought that your React application might be not optimized that it can be, or it is too slow to work properly? Here you will learn not only how to use React Profiler to debug this, but also most popular cases when your performance may suffer. This video is brought to you by Bceptor, and one of the best Bceptor products is Crude API. In any application, we are doing create, read, update and delete operations. And it is time consuming to build your own backend. Crude API allows you to do it in seconds. Here we can just type slash API slash articles, hit create crude API, and we are getting an API with all these methods. I can paste the URL to Postman and do a post request with any body, like title and description, and it will create a new article. Let's create one more article and retrieve our data. For this we are doing a GET request. Also you are getting sorting and filtering out of the box. So title equals learn react is filtering our items by this title. And you can find the link to crude API in the description box below. With that being said, let's jump into the video. And before we will start here is the most important point. You should not even think about optimizing your code if you don't have a problem. Yes, this is this simple. You can find lots of articles and videos on the internet that are saying that you must optimize your React code from the start, because in other case it will be a bad code and it won't work. Realistically, lots of React projects are quite small and they won't lag even if the code inside is not the best one. So just don't spend time on optimizing performance of your application if you are satisfied with the performance and you don't have any complaints about your project. But if you have some problems, it makes a lot of sense to know how to debug it. If you have a huge project with lots of different components, it might be tricky to find the exact place where your problem is. This is why we have a React Profiler, which is an amazing tool to debug your React component. First of all, you must download React Developer Tools, which includes Profiler inside. After installation, you will have Components and Profiler. Here we can click Components and see the list of the components in my application. This is not really useful. But what we want to use is Profiler and hear how it looks like. But before we will start, we need to change settings here. I want to click View Settings, and here by default we don't have a checkbox Highlight Updates when components render. And it is extremely helpful to see what components are being updated. This is why I highly recommend to enable this checkbox. After this our profiler is not running, so we can click here to start it, and then try to do something inside our application. As you can see, I am just typing in the input and we see a highlighted border. Now let's click Stop Profiling and check what we are getting. That border that you saw around the component was exactly the rendering of this specific component. So you can see when I am changing my input, the component which contains foo and bar is also rendered. This is why we are getting a border around it. Now let's look on our profiler. On the right we can see the render duration. And here we can select flame graph, which is just a tree of our components and how long they rendered. This is typically not what you want, you want ranked. Why that? Because the slowest component will be on the top. As you can see, our app component was rendered in 9 milliseconds and list component in 4 milliseconds. Also here on the right we see 1 of 14, which means here we had 14 re-renderings of our component. Now the main question, should we really optimize our performance for this application? The only correct answer here is no, because our application was rendered in total in 5 milliseconds. If we are talking about numbers like 200 milliseconds or sometimes even 500 milliseconds, it is extremely fast. Typically you don't need to optimize anything at all. But some people can say, ok, but we have a problem here, we are rendering components when it is not needed. Yes, this is totally correct, but who cares if our application is fast enough? But let's say that we have a performance problem and we want to optimize this. And as you can see, when I'm typing something in this input, this component which contains foo and pa is re-rendered. Let's have a look on the code. Here is my app component, and inside we have an array of users and a state for the text. Inside we are rendering our input with text and also a list which is a component where inside we are passing users. 
This list is a separate component where we're rendering our users. Most importantly here we can clear the console and try to type something in our input. As you can see we're getting rendering list, which means this list component was re-rendered. Should it be re-rendered? Not really, because we're changing the input and it is not something that we're passing to our child component. And a lot of people for some reason think that inside React, child components are not being re-rendered by default if their props are not being changed. And this is completely wrong, it does not work like this. By default, all children of our component that was changed are re-rendered. This is why if our app changes, then our list also changes. But we can introduce such functionality that our component is only being re-rendered when our props changed. We can simply wrap the whole list component with memo from React, and this is a function. As you can see here in the documentation, it lets you skip re-rendering when the component props are unchanged. But as you can see in browser, this didn't help, we're typing in the input and we're still getting rendering list. Why is that? Because yes, this code is working in a way that it will re-render when props are being changed, but in this case on remove is a function and it is recreated every single time. What does it mean? Let's have a look on the app. Every single time when application is re-rendered, this handle remove function is being recreated again and again. This is why when we are providing the new handle remove inside our list component, it is also re-rendered. In order to avoid this, we can use a hook which is called use callback and we can wrap handle remove and provide a users as a dependency. Why is that? Because inside we are using users, which means this function must be recreated and recalculate our filtered users only when users array is changed. Let's try again, I'm typing in the input and as you can see rendering list is not triggered, which means our child component list is not being re-rendered and you can see this border is happening only around our app component. And if this code with use callback and memo is too confusing to you and you want to learn it better, I have a full course of React interview questions where I cover all this needed React knowledge. So inside React you typically use three different things to improve your performance. This is either memo, when you want to wrap your component and only re-render it, when props are being changed, then we are using use callback to avoid recreating our functions, and the last one is use memo hook, which we can use to avoid recalculating of some variable. If we add here such code where we are using usernames and we are calculating the array of names from our users and we have wrapped it with use memo, so we are only updating this array when our users array is changed. What does it mean? We are reloading the page, we are getting recalculate users and this is our array of username foo and bar. So we entered this function, this is this console log and then we console logged our usernames. Now when I'm typing something inside the input, you can see that usernames are console logged, but recalculate users is not happening. Which means we improved performance because we avoided this inner logic of this function that recalculates something. Is that true? Not really. Why is that? Because people tend to forget that things like memo, use callback and use memo also must be executed and they also take time and resources. This code here with use memo is totally useless. In this case here usernames is just a derived value. We can simply write it as a variable which we calculate from array of users and we are totally fine. We don't need any performance optimizations here. The same goes about use effect. When I see such code where we just update some property depending on our users, my heart is bleeding. This code does not bring you any performance and it just makes your application slower and less supportable. So keep it simple and don't overuse such hooks. And the last thing that I want to mention is that fragment is amazing. You already know inside React you can use fragment to avoid creating an additional DOM nodes. You can see fragment is not visible and most people treat it as a solution for their CSS. In order to not break the CSS, they are using React Fragment to avoid creating additional divs. But this is not only a solution for CSS. The less amount of DOM nodes you have on the page, the faster your application is and the less stuff we need to re-render. Which actually means you must use React Fragment as often as possible 
because in the huge application the amount of nodes really is important. And if you're interested in getting better React job and earning more money, I highly recommend you to check this video where I cover lots of React interview questions that will help you tremendously.